And this is a very interesting sutta that is an exchange between the lay follower Visaka and his former wife uh, Aya Dhammadina. Dhammadina. And so the lay, the lay follower um, Visaka, which is not the lady like uh, Migara's mother, Migara Matta, this is not the same one. So this is another Visaka, and it's a, it's a man, just to make that clear. Uh, but he was a very advanced uh, the meditator, and he was uh, said to be an anagami, non-returner. So this is a fairly advanced conversation, because the bhikkhuni uh, Dhammadinna is an arahant, and she's discussing with her previous husband uh, about these topics who was known to be an anagami. So um, it's a very advanced, it can be advanced, but it also has a, a, a very nice flavor of an exchange between uh, two advanced meditators talking about uh, a little bit of a breakdown, basically, of dependent origination in a, in a colloquial way, in a non-linear, necessarily, non-linear way which can be uh, interesting also for us to learn. As a point, Chula Vedala Sutta Karna Rappo. Chula Vedala Sutta Hai Vipuni Brahma Dinda Ani Tisa Adhita Anke Purva Shramita Anke Vipuni Muna Adhita Jau Naurauta Visakha Kecha Vata Kecha Madhi Chalcha Hai Kecha Vata संवाद आहे काही प्रश्न उत्तर आहे आणि त्या प्रश्न उत्तरामध्ये पूर्ण हा हे सूत्र दिले आहे वेदल म्हणजे प्रश्न उत्तर आणि चूल वेदल म्हणजे छोटे प्रश्न उत्तर आणि त्याच्यामध्ये पटीच्या समुपाद जे आपण काल केलेलं परवा केलेलं होतं तेच थोड्या म्हणजे आपण अगदी एक एक लीक केली आहे एक एक साखळी केली होती तसं न करता जनरली तशा तशा चर्चेमधनं आपल्याला एक काय म्हणतात ना त्याला समजून घेण्याचा प्रयत्न आहे किंवा समजून घेण्याचा असं म्हणतात की अर्थात ब्रह्मदिना भिकुणी अरंगच होत्या आणि विसाक त्यांचे जे त्यांच्याबरोबर जे चर्चा करतात त्यांच्या पूर्वाश्रमीचे जे नवरा आहे तो अनाकामी आहे असं म्हटलं जातं आणि त्याच्याबद्दल त्यांच्या दोघांमधली ही चर्चा आहे त्यांच्या दोघांमधली ही चर्चा आहे प्रश्न उत्तर आहेत विसाक हे भिकू नाही आहेत ते लेह फॉलोवर आहेत उपासक आहेत आणि त्यांची आधीची बायको भिकूनी धम्मलीला ह्या अनंत झालेल्या आहेत आणि मग ते त्यांच्याकडे प्रश्न विचारायला येतात आणि हे दोनही ॲडव्हान्स म्हणजे एक अनाकामी आणि एक अरहंत यांच्यामधले प्रश्न उत्तर म्हणजे थोडेसे हाय लेवलचे प्रश्न आहेत किंवा समोरचे म्हणजे पुढचे प्रश्न आहेत पण त्याला म्हणजे this might be a, an advanced uh, discourse or an advanced conversation but there's a lot of things that are really helpful in this sutta in particular that can answer really uh, key questions and one of those uh, this is kind of how the sutta the discourse starts is about this identity what is this identity and for us in our practice it is all the things that arise in the mind the distractions these are all things that we are taking personally we are taking personally we have taken personally and we have accumulated them within us and tonight this is going to be about this whole process how does it work how does it get conditioned within us through paticca samuppada and uh, the relation to the panchupadana kandas basically the five aggregates the five fabric of, of the ego which i translate into हा जो ही जी चर्चा आहे ती जरी 
फार उची असली म्हणजे अनागामी आणि अनंतामध्ये असली तरी त्याच्यात जे पतीचे समुपाद सांगितलेला आहे तो आपल्याला अगदी सुरुवातीलाच हा प्रश्न पडतात जसे मी मी कोण हा मी मी कोण आहे असे जे प्रश्न पडतात ना आता ज्ञान करणारा कोण आहे कोणाला बघायचं आहे कोणाकडे बघायचं आहे बरोबर असे जे प्रश्न येतात ना त्याच्यावर चर्चा खूप सुंदर झालेली आहे आणि प्रत्येक वेळी आपल्याला हे प्रश्न पडतच असतात सब काय म्हणतो ना प्रश्न पालीमध्ये सब काय मी कोण माझी काय म्हणजे काय मी कोण आहे वगैरे असे जे प्रश्न आहेत मी काय करतोय मेडिटेशन कोण करतोय ध्यान कोण करतोय असे जे प्रश्न आपल्याला येतात ना बघणारा कोण आहे मन कुठे आहे असे काही काही प्रश्न असतात लोकांचे ते जे प्रश्न आहे ते सुरुवातीचेच त्याच प्रश्नांनी सुरुवात झालेली आहे आणि सकाळ सकाळ म्हणजे काय म्हणजे काय मी कोण मी कोण हे काय म्हणजे काय असे जे प्रश्न आहे ते विचारले गेले आहेत आणि त्याच्या त्याच्याबद्दल सांगताना पंचोपाद आणि खंद पंचोपाद आणि खंद म्हणजे नाम आणि रूपाबद्दल विश्लेषण खूप सुंदर केलेलं आहे ते आता म्हणजे जसं एक्सप्लेन करतील तसं मी तुम्हाला सांगेन ओके गुड Thus have I heard, once the teacher lived in Rajgaha, in the, bamboo in the bamboo forest at the squirrel feeding ground. At that time, the lay follower of Isaka approached the, the nun, Dhammadinna, paid loving respects and sat down beside her and asked, I, uh, I hear it said, identity, identity. What did the awakened one mean by identity? And I just really love that because I spent, um, I spent a year in Sri Lanka in the jungle and uh, got to learn a little bit of Singhala and then I'm learning a little bit of Hindi and Marathi and Punjabi. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I really noticed that uh, it's, a, it's a thing here in the language that uh, when, because I'm learning so I don't know a lot of things. And uh, when I try to say, that, like, I do a lot of mistakes. And then I would say a, a word like, uh, I don't know, like uh, in, uh, in Singhalese, uh, milk is kiri, kiri. And then I would say uh, kili or like something like that, kili. And, on own. and then I would always be um, helped or reminded by saying the word twice. People always say the word twice, kiri, kiri. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I've noticed, I, it's a, it's a, I think it's a cultural thing. And I, I, I really appreciate now when I see this, like, Sakayo, Sakayo. <laughs> sakayo, Sakayo, what is Sakayo? <laughs> you know? So, it's a, I don't know if you've noticed this, Venerable. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it comes up a lot in the suttas also. So, it's a really old cultural thing, I feel. <laughs> Yes, yes, I like it because now I understand why where this comes from. Anyways, yeah. just being here in India has unlocked some understanding yes. of the suttas. Hello, hello. Yes, yes. Hello, hello. Yes, exactly. Yes, see, yeah, exactly. Very good. Okay, so what did the awakened one mean by sakayo? Identity. The Awakened One taught that identity is merely the five fabrics of the ego. This is what I call the Pantu Padana Kanda. Okay, this is the five aggregates. Uh, you'll get the translation in Marathi, I don't know in Marathi yet. The fabric of matter, Rupa, Rupa Kanda. The fabric of experience or feeling, Vedana. The fabric of perception, sanya. The fabric of mental activities or sankara. And the fabric of consciousness, vinyana. These five fabrics of the ego, this is what the teacher meant by identity. Uh, <coughs> जो विसाख उपासक आहे तो भिकुनी धम्मदिनाच्या समोर आला उपसंकमी उपसंकमी पा धम्मदिना भिकुनी अभिवादे पा एक मंत्र मिसिली आणि एक मंत्र मिसिली को विसाख उपासक धम्मदिना भिकुनी एक करो 
Okay. So, where do we find these five things also? Or very, very, very similar to this? Maybe a little bit longer, a little bit more of an exposition on it. Mm, that was the talk two days ago. Hint. Aticha Samupada. Very good. Bahut Acha. 100%. Good. So, the five fabrics of the ego, the Panchupada Nakanda, are just a summary, basically, of Paticca Samupada. They are just a condensed version that we can really quickly understand easily. And um, actually, they're like the core. They're like the core of dependent origination. It's like an easy like, uh, version of it. And it talks about exactly the same thing. We have, we have Rupa, we have Vedana, we have Sanya, we have Sankara, we have Vinyana. And we also have Upadana, Upadana. So there is all of the dependent origination here, uh, just in a condensed version. And it's just the Buddha had different ways of explaining things. And the five aggregates, the Panchupada Nakandas, are one thing. Paticca Samupada are another way that he had to describe this. And he just, uh, here we just start, like right at the root. What is this identity? It's only this. It's only this. And, okay, let's, let's look into that a little bit closer here. Um, rupa. This, uh, for example, this body. I want my arm to be longer. Doesn't work. It's not gonna be longer. Um, I, I wish my hair would stop growing so that I wouldn't have to shave it. <laughs> but it doesn't work. They still grow. Still growing. I don't have any power over that. My heart is beating. Uh, well, thankfully. <laughs> but I don't know how it works. <laughs> like, if you tell me, like, just do a double beat. And of course, the Buddha says, this is the four great elements. And so ba body for the, the Buddha is just elements, you know? It's not, it's not nothing yours, really. It's just earth, fire.
fire, water, air, and that's it. He sometimes talks about the, the consciousness element too, which I really like. It's just an element, it's just there. Okay, good. So if we look into a little bit into the fabric of Vedana experience or feeling. So right now I'm sitting here, I'm feeling uh, uh, neither pleasant nor unpleasant uh, feeling of wind blowing on my skin lightly. It's not hot or cold and it's just the way it is. But um, I keep, like, do I, how much uh, power do I have over this? Uh, I can say like, uh, I want to experience something else, for example. Can I, can I make it be something else? Can I, can I not feel the cushion under me and uh, the, the light wind and the, the heat in some areas of my robe? No, it's just the way it is. Even if I was, if I were to say like, I want it to be like this, I want it to be like that, it's not, it's not going to be like that because it's just the way it is. The, if I were to say I want it to be a different way, then, then this would be me adding on something to it, adding a label, adding something, uh, an opinion, uh, an idea, a personal uh, preference. And then we have perception, and perception can be understood in a few different ways, but really, perceptions are, are interesting too. I mean, I, um, I am seeing here, all of you, I'm, I'm deciding to kind of shift my awareness here and there, looking at everybody. Uh, but really, um, if I want to perceive something else, let my perceptions be like this, let my perceptions be like that. 
let my perceptions be of pink elephants in the room flying around with wings. That's, it's not happening. So it's, it's like this. Perception is like this. And if I want it to be something else, well, I'm just fighting with the truth, literally. Uh, this is what it is. And uh, I really, how much control do I have over this? Well, I can turn my head like this. And I can turn my head like this. That's about it. That's about how much control I have over that. Um, it can be all understood as concept as well. But concepts, um, I mean, it's a little bit more tricky because a lot of people think that we're like in control of what we're actually putting in our brains. But this is all conditioned, you know, like, like we were talking yesterday. And actually, in, in a lot of countries, colors are different. You know, in some countries, what we consider yellow for them is orange. What they consider orange, we consider red, and like vice versa. I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but in some countries, colors are different. Uh, the perception, and then there's different names for things, and uh, and this is a really interesting kind of uh, thing that happens when you learn more than one language. Is that you get to encounter these things where the concepts are very different. For example, I remember my first, my native, my native language is French. So uh, I was born in the French Canadian fa family. And then I learned English afterwards. English is only my second language. It's become my first language now, but. <laughs> um, and then uh, learning Spanish and then learning Singhalese and then, well, trying to learn Hindi and Marathi now. I, I swear I'll try learning Marathi um, you get to encounter really interesting mind games that are like uh, in French and that this is also a really interesting learning a new language is really interesting in terms of dependent origination because you get to you can't use the same expressions and this, the way that we express ourselves are, is so intimately connected to the way that we think we are for example, there are so many expressions in French where I'm from that I can never even think of using in English, for example. So just there, and sometimes when I come back to my family, for example, I want to say something, but I want to say it in, like my, my brain is forming the idea in English, and I have to translate it in French again, and then it doesn't work, <laughs> because I can't say it like that. And then I'm all messed up, because I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> and it's so closely related to the way, the way we express ourselves, the way that we think, who we think we are, how we behave and all this. And so you have to kind of reinvent a kind of a way of expression that is a kind of a new self, basically, every time you learn a new language. I can't talk. One of the things I've noticed when I was trying to speak Singhalese was that it's a lot more simple than French and English. But I don't know how to speak like that. It's too simple. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me at first. So I have to kind of train my mind to understand things like, OK, so that's what that means. Because it's just so to the point and simple. And you know, if I try to translate every word in my mind that I want to say in English in Singhalese, they're just gonna like, it's like, like who's this person? You know, <laughs> like, it's just like talking way too much. <laughs> so it's very interesting, and I think um, sanya can can be understood like linguistically like that. It's a it's a good uh, parallel where we have this phenomena happening where concepts are completely broken apart and like changed. You can have. You know, in, uh, in some Native American languages, they have like 15, 50 names for snow in Canada. We have like two or three, you know, like it's, uh, and so for them, it's very different. You know, it's, a, it's so many, uh, it, but it's the way that they're perceiving all this. And so the language has adopted their perception, their sanya. <laughs> Vedana, 
Good. I'm officially impressed that you remembered all of this. <laughs> That's amazing. That was a really long bit. <laughs> okay. Everybody following? Nobody sleeping? No? Okay, no sleeping. Good. Good. Somebody was talking about sleeping meditation today. <laughs> so I just want to put a little disclaimer here. 
when we talk about these things, we p talk about the Panchupada Nakandas and we talk about Paticca Samupada. <laughs> For me, in Buddhism, what has happened is a lot is people have made this very linear. It's understood in very linear, like linear ways. And in my own understanding and practice, I've come to realize it's so not linear. <laughs> it's actually, uh, it's, it, there are so many ways we can understand this. And don't pour concrete out of this, what I'm saying tonight. This is all, you know, it's, it's, it's a very living organism. It's a very uh, dynamic teaching. And if we try to make it, systematize it too much, we're losing a lot of the meaning because this is really all together, working all together synergistically. Is that a word? And this is the five aggregates, the Panchupada and Akandas. I'll break down the Paticca Samupada. I think I'll try to be quick because it's already taking a little bit of time. But um, I just want to say, you know, it, the one of the most beautiful things about this is that it's alive you know it's we, it's not to make concrete out of it you know? it's really it's it's actually much more open and broad and it when we start to see it like that we start to see it in everything we do and that's when it becomes really useful it's like uh well it's like seeing the matrix <laughs> in everything you know you start to see the code that runs behind everything and so I really think it's important to keep it alive, to keep it the way that the Buddha taught. The Buddha had many different ways of explaining his teaching and that, that we get stuck on little words and you know like uh, uh, no it really has to be like that, it cannot be other, other things or like we, we hear that oh the Buddha says this in this sutta so it has to be exactly this here. No, like just, just translating the suttas, and that's wonderful because you're the, gr the best audience for that. Um, translating the suttas, we realized that things like, for me, was like the, the word sanya. When I translated all these suttas, and you know, I, I thought, okay, I'll call it concept. And then I realized, and then I came back to the Potapada sutta, and then I see like, uh, he's using sanya for very different, you know, I can't call it concept right now. Because it's not like kama. It's not sensory concepts, it's like sensory like experience or it's sensory like perceptions. Then, then it, it gives a, we start to understand that the Buddha didn't have these really strict uh, boundaries like the word Sankara, like the word Dhamma. These are such broad topics. If we try to like really make it be one thing, it just doesn't work that well. So, and to keep it open, we leave room for a lot more understanding around these things. So, जेव्हा इंग्रजांनी किंवा इंग्रजीमध्ये ट्रान्सलेट जेव्हा झाले तेव्हा 
मी जसं सांगितलं की बुद्धाला लॉर्ड म्हणायचे बरोबर आहे की मला लक्षात आले की नाही लॉर्ड नाही किंवा धम्माला डॉक्टरी म्हणायचे आणि मग डॉक्टरी नाही तर धम्माचे बरेच अर्थ आहे बरं ना असं तर तसे जेव्हा पालीमध्ये आपण तो शब्द तसाच राहतो धम्म म्हणजे धम्म तो धम्म कुठल्या वेगवेगळ्या अर्थाने वापरला जातो तसा तसा आपण ओपन असला पाहिजे आपण हे ह्या अर्थानेच घ्यायचं किंवा बुद्धाने असंच शिकवलं असेल असं म्हणजे त्याच्यात अडकून पडायचं नाही आपण कायम प्रत्येक काय म्हणतात ना त्याला वेगळ्या अर्थासाठी तयार असलं पाहिजे की या अर्थाने सांगितलं नसेल कशावरून असा अर्थ घेतला तर काय काय त्याचा नीट समजत आहे ना आपल्याला आपल्याला काय अनुभव आला पाहिजे आणि समजलं पाहिजे हे महत्वाचं आहे त्याच्यामुळे कसं समजतंय ते जास्त महत्वाचं आहे न की तो शब्द शब्द की फक्त काय असतात शब्द काय असतात मी तुम्हाला पहिल्यांदा पण सांगितलं होतं की जेव्हा बुद्धांनी म्हणजे बुद्धांना ज्ञान प्राप्त झालं त्यांनी ते शब्द बनवले सगळे आपल्याला शिकवण्यासाठी बरोबर आहे की नाही त्यामुळे शब्द बनवणं आणि मग त्यातनं ते अर्थ अभिप्रेत बनवणं हे फार दोन वेगळ्या गोष्टी आहेत बरोबर ना म्हणजे जसं बंदे सांगितलं की तिथे खूप सारा बर्फ पडतो त्याला प्रत्येक बर्फातल्या वेगळ्या वेळेला पन्नास वेगळे नावं आहेत बर्फाला आपल्या इथे बर्फ म्हणजे बर्फ बरोबर आहे की नाही सगळे कुठे बारीक बर्फ असला गुरगुरणाला असला तरी तो काय असतो बर्फच असतो तर कारण आपल्याकडे कधी बर्फ पडतच नाही फ्रीजमध्ये बघतो तेव्हा बर्फ पडतो त्याच्यामुळे आपल्याला केवळ बर्फ माहिती बरोबर ना पण त्यांच्या देशात कायम बर्फ असतो त्यांचे ते वेगवेगळे नावं देणार आहे ना आपण कसं पावसाला वेगवेगळे नावं देतो रिमझिम पडणारा जोरदार पडणारा मुसळदार पडणारा बरोबर अशी आपण नावं देतो तसे नावं देणं किंवा आपल्याला नीट समजणं म्हणून बुद्ध आपल्याला वेगवेगळ्या पद्धतीने सांगण्याचा प्रयत्न करतात गोष्टी तीच असते पण आपण ती नाही हा असाच आहे असं करून अडकायचं नाही तेच म्हणते प्रयत्न पूर्वक सांगायचा प्रयत्न करते आय डोंट नो आय एम स्मायलिंग आय ट्राय टू टेल दॅट यु नो बिकॉज आय हॅव बीन टेलिंग दे टाईम डोंट स्टिक टू द वन मिनिंग वेरी गुड सी वॉज मेन टू हॅपन दिस रिट वॉज मेन टू हॅपन गुड ओके सो बेस्ड अपॉन रूपा बिकॉज नाम आर रूपा वील सी दॅट लिटल बिट लेटर बेस्ड अपॉन रूपा देर इज वेर इन आ अरायझिंग एन सन्या इज पॉसिबल and based on this there is we we make things out of this huh we sankara we uh, what's the verb sankata sankata sank sankati we, yeah yes so we we create things out of this so there is a lot of activity in the mind i like to call sankara mental activity huh there is yes yes the classical answer is there's three kinds of sankaras there's body mind and speech right I know but <laughs> I like to see it mainly because of what we're doing here we're talking mostly about the mind here right so when when we're most of the time I feel like the Buddha is referring mainly to mental activities in this particular field and so we create things we think about it we have and sankaras is a mix of um, uh whatever has been conditioned in the past whatever has come into being our preferences opinions ideas about things and concepts that all gets mingled up into sankara and all of this creates this thing that we call vinyana this consciousness that is also due to the buddha's teaching and his wisdom we understand vinyana is also fully fabricated sankara pachaya vinyana right so this vinyana arises upon a cause and a condition and if we move and if we remove that cause and condition then there's no arising of vinyana so it is completely fabricated it is dependent on a cause so apan ata vedana ani sanya he upavar aplyala अनुभवता येतं किंवा आपल्याला रूपामुळे अनुभवता येतं त्याच्यानंतर आपण संखार खंडाबद्दल बोलूया संखार खंड जो आहे तो संखार खंड जो 
संखार म्हणजे काय तर संखार म्हणजे बनवणे आपण का सतत बनवत असतो बरोबर ना तर बनते ना संखार मला मेंटल ऍक्टिव्हिटी म्हणजे मनामध्ये बन आपण जे विचार करत असतो सतत आपल्याला काहीतरी मागच्या मागच्या विचाराला पुढे घेऊन जात असतो मा काहीतरी बघितलेलं असतं त्याच्यात विचार करत असतो आणि पुढे काय करायचं याची विचार करत नाही विचार करणे किंवा काहीतरी नवीन नवीन बनवत असणं मनामध्ये क्रिएट करत असणं काहीतरी निर्माण करत असणं हे ह्याला संखार म्हणतो बरोबर आहे ना आणि हे संखार सुद्धा कसा आहे ना की आधीच्या आपले जे विचार आहेत त्याला धरूनच पुढे बनत असतो तो काय आपोआप बनत नाही बरोबर ना त्याला पण काहीतरी कॉज आणि कंडिशन म्हणजे काहीतरी हेतू असतात किंवा त्याला काहीतरी कारणं असतात त्याला काहीतरी आधार असतो त्याच्यानुसार ते बनत असत आणि त्याच्यानंतर संखार हा संखार हा विज्ञानाला जन्म देतो संखार छया विज्ञान विज्ञान म्हणजे काय तर आपण त्याला जाणीव म्हणतो जाणीवपूर्वक जाणीव म्हणजे कॉन्शियसनेस म्हणजे जे ज्याच्यामुळे आपल्याला जाणता येत बरोबर ना आपल्याला समजता येतं की जाणीव जाणीव होते प्रत्येक गोष्टी तर त्याला आपण विज्ञान म्हणतो आणि हे विज्ञान सुद्धा बनलेलं आहे संखारांमुळे बनलेलं आहे तर संखार हे त्याचं कारण आहे ते त्याचे जन्मगाते आहेत बरोबर ना विज्ञानाचे जस जर आपण संखार जे विज्ञानाला जन्म देत असतात ते आपण काढून टाकले तर विज्ञान जन्माला येत नाही किंवा ते कॉज आपण काढून टाकले आणि किंवा कंडिशन काढलं तर विज्ञान बदलत असतं विज्ञान सुद्धा वेगळ्या प्रकारे निर्माण होतं बरोबर ना आणि विज्ञान कसं आहे जसं मी सांगत असते ना आपल्या मरता वेळेचं विज्ञान कसं असतं ते दुसरं आपल्याला जन्म देणारं कृती विज्ञान कटी संधी विज्ञान असं काय नाही म्हणजे ते आपल्याला निर्माण करत असतं मग चुकी मरताना कसं विज्ञान असेल त्याशा प्रकारे आपल्याला पतिसंधीचं विज्ञान मिळेल मी नेहमी सांगत असते मरताना चित्त कसे असतील त्यानुसार आपण गाडो घोडा काहीतरी बनणार असतो बरोबर आहे ना ते आपल्याला उपल येतं तर विज्ञान सुद्धा आपणच बनत असतो त्या कॉजमध्ये कंडिशनमध्ये आपण जसं बनवू तसं ते विज्ञान बनणार आणि विज्ञान मग काय विज्ञान कशाला जन्म देतं ना त्यामुळे नामरूप हे जे बनलेलं असतं ते विज्ञान असतं बरोबर ना विज्ञान पण हे पण विज्ञान आपोआप बनतं का नाही आपणच बनवतो कशाने बनवतो संखाराने बनवतो संखार कशाने बनतात आपल्याच विचाराने थोडक्यात काय सगळं जे आपण आहे बरोबर ना त्याच्याबद्दल आपण आपण कोण आहे असं जे बनवत असतो त्याची उत्तर आपण जर शोधायला लागली तर हे आपणच आपल्याला बनवलेलं असतं ओके गुड So, whenever you're meditating, and this is really uh, the best part, is that whatever you're experiencing is either one of these things. And so, just before you stand up, you can notice why are you standing up before you're breaking your sit. Is it, is it a sensation that's unpleasant? And then the mind goes, mm, I don't like it. And then this is me taking this sensation personal or this perception personal. Some people see a light, some people see flickering, some people see uh, all kinds of things happening in the mind. And sometimes they break their sit because of that. <clears throat> and more and more we train to see things for what they are. Yata bhutang jnana dasanam. So this is what we are seeing the way it is. Basically, more and more, we're talking about in interviews, like people come and say, oh, I see this light, I see this person, I see this, this flickering, I see this. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all good, it's all good. It, it arises and then it passes away. Just 6R, let go, release, relax. That's okay, it's part of the purification process. It was in there, locked up somewhere, and then it comes up. And then, You get to see all your own uh, conditioned behavior that are uh, welded upon uh, all these types of different Vedanas, these experiences. Uh, so like painful experiences, there's going to be some people are more patient than others, but some, sometimes we, we just really cringe or it's like, oh no, I can't take it. Especially at the beginning of the retreat, we have a lot of that. There's a lot of... Uh, 
there's a lot of uh, white noise in the mind. There's a lot of uh, instability, and it takes very little to unsta unstabilize the mind. And then <clears throat> we can have uh, we can have either vedana or sanya or uh, sankara, these mental fabrications that arise in the mind. Some people say, I was meditating and now this really random thought came in and I just started thinking about these things and yeah, it's all good, no problem. 6R, release, see the tension, little bit of tension, relax, relax that tension, opening up awareness, then re-smile, uplifting the mind, and coming back to your object of meditation and then floating on, gliding. And that's it. And more and more we, we will learn to see more and more anicca sanya. We will see that each of those are just arising and passing away, arising and passing away. What matters is the sequence that the mind gets liberated from. And this is the seven supports of awakening, the eightfold path. And you, we can keep cultivating this. and. As we let go of the clinging, the upadana, then what happens is that naturally we just allow the flow of experience to happen without any tension, without any clinging. We're not trying to grasp the water. We're just realizing I'm actually just, I am the one who's like causing myself pain because I'm just doing this and this is just water and I, I don't need to hold this and let the river of your experience and perception just flow. And then we live a much happier life. And meditation, we start to understand meditation for what it is. And it's a purification process. These perceptions, these feelings, these sensations, they arise and then they pass away. They arise and then they pass away. Yeah, right. 
first question. Ooh. I forgot my box of chocolates. Did you bring yours? <laughs> oh, you're right. You gave it to the bunny. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's happy. <laughs> good. Very good. Okay. Everybody following? Ready for the second question? Okay. Very good. Uh, lots of weary out tonight. Sadhu Aye, he replied. This is Brother Visaka. I see I'm mixing my languages here. Delighted and uplifted, he asked a further question. Aye, I hear it said, the source of identity, the source of identity. What did the awakened one mean by the source of identity? That is whatever is composed of longing, Brother Visaka ending in future becoming wrapped in desire and attachment clinging to this and that here and there longing for sensory stimulation the senses kama chanda longing for being bhavatanha longing for the end of being vibhavatanha this is called the source of identity by the awakened one now we will get the Pali. Sakaya Samudaya, Sakaya Samudaya, the Aye, Uchati, Katwon, Poye, Sakaya Samudaya, Uto, Murati, Thirty Asamuta, Ki, Atamala, Sakaya Unjakaiko, Rona, Ajay, Nikaya, Ajay, Nikaya, 
आयडेंटिटी काय म्हणजे नाही नामरूप आहे आणि आपण त्याला पकडायचा प्रयत्न करतो म्हणून आपल्याला दुःख आहे हे मला कळलं आता सक्काय समुदाय सक्काय समुदाय म्हणजे हे जे मी माझी माझी जी ओळख आहे ते मी असं का वागतो मी माझा असं का म्हणतो मी सगळं मी आहे माझं आहे त्याचा मूळ कुठे आहे त्याचं कारण कुठे आहे त्याचा त्याचा सोर्स कुठे आहे असं ते विचारत आहे आणि त्याचं त्याचं जे कॉज आहे किंवा त्या समुदाय आहे त्याचं जे कारण आहे त्याचं त्याचं कारण विसा विसाखाला ब्रह्मलिंगा सांगत आहे आहुसो विसाख तन्हा कोनो भविका नंदी राग सहगता तंत्र तंत्र अभिनंदिनी सेम काम तन्हा भव तन्हा भव तन्हा अयम को आहुसो विसाख सत्काय समुदौरो वृत्तो भगवता ती तर त्यांनी सांगितलं आहे बघ या सत्काय समुदायाचं कारण कृष्णा आहे तन्हा आहे अॅक्सिडेंट आहे किंवा ट्रेनिंग आहे बरोबर ना की मला पाहिजे पाहिजे मला नाही पाहिजे ती तन्हा आहे ती या आणि ती कशी आहे टोनो भविका सगळ्यांना माहिती आहे ना शब्द पुन्हा पुन्हा उत्पन्न होणारे नंदी राग सहगता म्हणजे खूप आनंद देणारे शांत व त्याच्यात अडकून ठेवणारी आणि तत्र तत्र अभिनंदिनी म्हणजे तिकडे तिकडे जिकडे तिकडे अगदी पसरणारी किंवा शा आपल्याला रमवणारी कोणती कामतन हा भवतन हा आणि सो दिस इज हाव आयडेंटिटी अरायजेस विथ all the judgments and all the opinions and all the preferences and all the ideas that we have and the labels that we put on things that i like i don't like i want i don't want and all of this it is very minute very tiny tiny but the more we do this this is how it gets crystallized and then with pressure and time it materializes and it makes <laughs> a self it's like all these micro iodes i'm not sure about the crystal formation mr scientist <laughs> can you pull out some data on this <laughs> i mean neuroscience says the same thing there's no self in the brain there's yes. no little little self location you know it's not hiding in the hippocampus it's not hiding in any little part of the brain there's just a bunch of neural firings that come together yes. and oh. they're always changing this so there's no self anywhere to be found in the brain you mean there's not a little door with a little <laughs> gnome in there with oh, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that? <laughs> no that's not that's what it feels like oh <laughs> yes <laughs> so and how does this arise specifically now we say yes this is the craving that arises upon these things but how does it arise and then we can take the one page 166 of the puja book and now this is the interactive part you have to to work a little bit 166 ah uh -huh. and we start at avija pachaya sankara sankara pachaya vinyana pachaya nama roopa pachaya salayatana pachaya passaa pachaya vedana pachaya tanha pachaya upadana pachaya भवा पच्चया जाति पच्चया शोक परिदेव दुःख दोमन सुपाय स संभवन्ति व्हाट इज इट विथ द रेजिंग ऑफ दिस लामेंटेशन पेन एंड ग्रीफ एंड डिस्पेयर दैट्स व्हाट बंते वी मदर एंड सी वुड से Um, I like to do it in English also not because I'm trying to promote the English language if I knew Marathi I would probably say it in Marathi but I I like to um offer a different uh, neural connection in the brains of people so that 
the classical understanding of this can be a little bit loosened up and we can have uh, other things to uh, rest upon and uh, support ourselves in this practice. And so from lack of awareness arise... Yes. Oh, I have less people. <laughs> you guys... Yes. I know, uh, I know you guys know the Pali very well. I knew you, you could even <laughs> say it by heart probably, yes, yes. From activities, our mental activities arise. Consciousness. From consciousness arise. Mind from mind and body arise. Six from the six senses arises. Contact. From contact arises. Experience. From experience arises. From discontent arises. Attachments. From attachments arise. Identity. Oh, there we are. From identity arises. Birth. From birth arises. Yeah. Sadness, grieving, trouble, depression, and anxiety all arise. Yes. And now I, li I really like this uh, little sequence here. Yadahave patu bhavanti dhamma atapino jayato brahmanasa atasa kanka vapayanti sabba yato pajanati sahetu dhamma. When the nature of things become evident to the intently meditating brahmana, at that time all doubts disappear as one understands the cause of reality. So when we start understanding this, we really start to have a good insight on how these things arise and how we're creating these. And this is our power, this is our, our superpower, because after that, we have the power to change, because we see things for what they are, and that's huge. Now, second question. I, I hear it said, the cessation of identity, should I let you uh, translate what I said or was that? It's okay. It's okay? Okay. Anyways, it's in the book, so you know, you know where to find it. The cessation of identity, the cessation of identity, but I, what is the cessation of identity? It is the complete falling away of dissatisfaction. It's giving up. Independence and release, unlatching. Tassayewa tanhaya asesa viraga nirodo chago patinissago mutti analeo. And so this is uh, one of my favorite lines uh, to remember also. Uh, what, what do we need to do with this? And this is just like the direction for everything that we do on this path. Good. This is called the cessation of identity by the awakened one. Yes, you can. Pali? Yeah. Pali? Okay. तरी पण आपल्याला म्हणजे आपण इतके अभिजे मध्ये असतो की आपल्याला तीन दिवस आहेत असं वाटत असतं 
प्रत्येक शाळा विचार वेगळे असतात शरीर वेगळं असतं तरी पण आपण कॉन्सेप्टला म्हणा किंवा विचारांना म्हणा आपल्या काय म्हणतात ना त्याला हे माझं आहे किंवा माझे विचार आहेत माझे मत आहे असं धरून आपण आहे मी तयार केलेला असतो आणि त्या मला स्वतःला आपण इतकं धरून ठेवलेलं असतं खरं म्हणजे तसं काही नसतं बरोबर आहे ना पण आपण हळूहळू हळूहळू स्वतःला असं बनवलेलं असतं आणि त्याच्यामधनं आपल्याला ना काय म्हणतात जेव्हा आपल्याला कळतं की हे बदलत आहे बरोबर ना हे बदलत आहे तेव्हा त्याच्यातनं आपल्याला बाहेर येत आहे बरोबर आहे ना त्याच्यामुळे आपली ही स्वतःची जी ओळख आहे त्या ओळखीचं कारण म्हणजे मी स्वतःला मी स्वतः काय आहे तर मी स्वतःला बनवलेला आहे कशाने बनवलेला आहे मला हे हवंय मला ते नको मला हे आवडतंय मला ते नाही आवडत असं म्हणून माझ्या विचारांनी माझ्या यांनी मी स्वतःला बनवलेला आहे मग नुसता दुसरा तिसरा प्रश्न येतो मग दिसा तर तिसरा प्रश्न विचारतात ब्रह्मलिंगाला की मग याचा विरोध कसा सकाय निरोध हो सकाय निरोध हो सकाय निरोध हो तो भगवता आहे हे लक्षात घ्यायचं आहे की सात धर्मतीर्थांना तुला काय म्हणायचं आहे असं नाही विचार बुद्धांनी सकाय निरोध कशाला सांगितले आहे हे मला सांग असे ते नेहमी विचार बरोबर आहे ना ते तिला त्यांना असं नाही विचारत की सकाय निरोध तू सांग बुद्धांनी सकाळ निरोध म्हणजे काय सांगितलेलं आहे ते तू मला सांग असं ते विचार आणि म्हणते त्यांना त्याचं उत्तर त्या भगतेला फार आवडतं की त्याचं उत्तर असं आहे ध्यानचे पटी मिसक गो हा शब्द नेहमी वापरते मिसटून जायचं आहे एस्केप ओके मुक्ती मुक्ती म्हणजे सोडून द्यायचं आहे मुक्त व्हायचं आहे त्याला खाली टाकून आपण वर घेऊन जायचं आहे अनालय घर घर त्या घरात त्या घरात राहायचंच नाही घर सोडून द्यायचं आलय आलय म्हणजे घर अनालय म्हणजे ज्याला घर नाही आपण या घरात मी मी करत राहतो ते घर काय करायचं आहे सोडून द्यायचं आहे निरोध म्हटलेला आहे तसं संपवायचं तन्हा संपवली तन्हाला सोडून दिलं की आपले मी 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 पण आहे माझं माझं मी माझं ते सुद्धा ती पण जाते So how does this happen the cessation of identity now we say the giving up the independence release and unlatching from it anario then uh in the whole chain how does this happen and this is on page 168 avija nirodha sankara sankara nirodha vinyana nirodha उपाधानी Yes, very good. Very good. Now in English. Oh. When lack of this lack of awareness ceases. Activities cease. When activities cease. Consciousness when activities cease. Consciousness ceases. When consciousness ceases. Mind and body cease. When consciousness ceases. The ceases cease. When the mind and body cease. The ceases cease. When the six senses cease. Contact ceases. When contact ceases. when experience ceases, discontent ceases when discontent ceases, ceases when attachment ceases 
When identity ceases, when birth ceases, and sadness, grieving, trouble, depression, and anxiety all cease, all done. Can you imagine? No more sadness, no more grieving, no more trouble, no more depression, no more anxiety. That sounds pretty good. Sounds like a modern cure for everything. <laughs> so, and how, how, how do we do this? How does it come to be Nirodha? Oh, somebody said? Six R Karo. Yes. Man Batakla, Six R Kara. Very good. Good students. <laughs> so this is how it arises. This is how it comes to be. When we talk about the Panchu Paranakandas, now this is the way it comes up. This is one of the sequence the Buddha uses. Now, we have lack of discernment. There is not, the awareness is not clear. It's not sharp. It doesn't know exactly what, it's a bit, it's got a few hindrances and it's causing a little bit of disturbances in the mind. Then, all of our sankharas, all, everything that we've lived and conditioned, all of that comes up as just like activities in the mind or whatever it's going to be, it's going to come up as some kind of something, an agitation. And all of that, all of these little, um, these little birds like I was explaining, did I explain it on this retreat? The, the, the flock of birds that are just moving around and it looks like a cloud and this is consciousness but it's actually it's not really a cloud it's a thousand birds and they're all flying everywhere and they're kind of nice and flowy and but when we re when we take one of them out one by one the distractions one by one and we still the mind and then the cloud it becomes small and it becomes barely perceptible and then when we take all of the little birds out all the little Chaitanas, the intentions, the volitions, the, all the perceptions, the, all of it that arises through our past conditioning. Then at some point, and this is where neither perception nor non-perception is, and a few of you are in the quiet mind right now, and this is what is happening, is we're, there's not enough birds to tell that there's a cloud anymore. <laughs> so there's not enough mental activity left to tell that there is consciousness happening. And this is neither perception or non-perception. Neva sanya na sanya. And because we only are aware of this state when we come out, when there's enough birds again that we can tell, oh, there's a, there's a cloud now. There's a consciousness again. And then we, and then we, re, we see this and then we, oh, right. And then we start to sit, like relax again and, remove all the activities again and go deeper until there's no more nothing blank slate it's like turning off the lights completely consciousness all gone and this is where some of you are right now in the quiet mind it takes three maybe four hours sometimes and then there will be a dip there will be a time where there's really not enough little birds little activities to tell anything that there's consciousness in there but there's still the six R's are getting programmed at the deepest level of your operating system in the mind basically and you're training your brain to be on release all the time and this is kind of like recoding your whole mind structure basically to release to Nibbana and at some point the mind goes into it it goes there's nothing else lights out and when it comes out you can start to see how the mind comes up again and how it kind of starts to be more active and then there's an I oh I see I'm back hi and then <laughs> and then it's like oh I'm here <laughs> I <laughs> and then the I it does what, what it does it just I it just eyes everything I, I am this, I do this, I, 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 I see, I do. But now there's an I that says, oh, I was gone for a little bit. And now it's really interesting. Now there's a lot of things to understand about this, but 
uh, a few of you are at that level where at this point we're noticing that there is tension even in awareness itself even in consciousness itself we have stored tension panchupadana kanda in those kandas we have we have some upadana upadana in there and we need to release purify all of it so that it gets released completely and so the five the five aggregates we don't really need the we don't really have power over them right like it's it's happening on its own but we have power over tanha we have power over upadana we have power over bhava the sense of self that arises the sense of self is nothing but a bundle of attachments upadana these are all the things that because we like something i like melon juice and it's true i like melon juice i'm a melon juice kind of guy and now here goes bhava i think i'm a melon juice kind of guy i studied in mechanics so i think i'm a mechanic oh i'm a mechanic i don't know anything about computers but mang bhava could be oh i'm a forest monk i'm wearing this color i'm wearing my robe in a particular way there could be a way that someone still clings to these things basically but there could be a way also that one just does it because that's just the buddha laid it out and you're just following what he what he laid out but there can be associating attachment from the littlest craving the littlest like i want this i like this i want this i like this and then it accumulates and it becomes a bundle of attachment and that bundle is bhava is that sense of self i am existing and this is where we have control over the lower part not so much this is kind of too late it's already happening but we can six are the rest and then it get it gets lighter and then bhava and jati jati is also the birth of karma which feeds the sankharas which feed the avijas but if we lighten up that sequence we also lighten up what arises for us the conditionings when advanced meditators will keep practicing for a long time i at the beginning there can be a lot of lights a lot of geometrical patterns a lot of things happening in the mind and neither perception and non-perception i call this the uh the, the the active mind but this kind of calms down after a while and it doesn't really happen so much because all the storehouse that we've been keeping inside our minds gets purified it goes away and then the mind it just it just knows where to go it knows what to do and it, it doesn't have the this baggage anymore and the mind is always very light uplifted and so this is how this is how it works this is how the panchupadana kandas are found in paticca samuppada basically paticca samuppada is just telling you how this is happening and this is how it all ceases <laughs> ouch uh, <laughs> मन भटकते मी त्याला शिक्षा करून 
पुन्हा व्यक्त करायला लावते किंवा विचारायला मध्ये भेटते वगैरे असं घरात आपण काय करतो हळूहळू लेटको करून रिलॅक्स करून आपण आपल्या मनाला वेगळी सवय लावतो वेगळी काय करतोय त्याला दिशा देतो त्याला रोज असं बनवण्याच्या पेक्षा आपण त्याला असं सोडत चाललोय सोडत चाललोय सोडत चाललोय त्याच्यामुळे आपण असं हलकं हलकं होत चाललोय हलकं हलकं होत चाललोय आपण ज्या बन ज्या ज्या ज्यांनी बनलेलं आहे ते मी 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 असं करत आपण त्याला थोडस ढिलं करतोय ढिलं करतोय ढिलं करतोय ढिलं करतोय आणि सोडत चाललो मुद्दे असे म्हणाले की तुमच्यातले बरेच असे विक्टर आहे तुमच्यापैकी बरेच असे आहेत जे आता खूप ध्यानामध्ये पुढे गेलेले आहेत जे त्यांचं मन असं खूप शांत झालेलं आहे बरोबर आहे ना तर ते इतकं शांत झालेलं आहे की तुम्हाला आता ते काय म्हणतात त्याला उत्पन्न होतोय नष्ट होतोय अगदी शांत झालेलं असं दिसत बरोबर आहे ना त्याला वाईट माइंड मध्ये गेल्यासारखं म्हणजे गेलंय बरेच जण तसे गेले तसे त्यांना अनुभव वाटतात आणि मग काही असं वाटतं की मी आहे की नाही बरोबर आहे की नाही किंवा जाणीव आहे की नाही जाणीव बरोबर ना आणि मग काही वेळा जाणीव राहत नाही आणि मग हळूहळू पुन्हा जाणीव येते आणि हळूहळू पुन्हा जाणीव यायला लागली की मी मी येते बरोबर आहे ना मी येते काही वेळेला ते मीपणा निघून गेलेला असतो फक्त जाणीव असते बरोबर आहे आणि मग हळूहळू पुन्हा आपण जाणीवेमध्ये येतो आणि मग त्या अरे मला इतक्या वेळ जाणीव नव्हती त्याला आपण नेव संज्ञा ना संज्ञा असं म्हणतो की आता मला जाणीव होती की ओळख होती ही मी आहे माझी आहे मी करते आणि काही थोड्यासाठी मी पणाची जाणीव आपली नष्ट होते आपण त्यातनं बाहेर येतो आणि थोड्या वेळाने पुन्हा म्हणजे हे तीन चार तास बसल्यावर असं व्हायला लागतं आणि मग पुन्हा आपण मी मध्ये येतो बरं ना मी परत मी माझं माझं वगैरे असं करायला लागतो पण ह्या ह्या ह्याच्या अनुभवापर्यंत आपण आता हळूहळू काय करायला लागलो जायला लागलो पाहिजे तर हे शक्य आहे जाणं की आपण ह्याला विरोध करू शकतो ह्याच्यामधनं हा जो मी पण आहे जो आपल्याला भव बनवतो बरं ना हा भव हे मी पणाच आपल्याला काय करतो पुन्हा पुन्हा जन्म घ्यायला भाग पडत असतो आणि तो भव भव म्हणजे काय पुन्हा 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 आपण जेव्हा मी 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 करत असतो तेव्हा तो आपला भव म्हणजे निर्माण करत असतो आपल्याला निर्माण करत असतो तर हेच जे निर्माण आपण पुन्हा पुन्हा होत असतो त्या पुन्हा पुन्हा होण्याला आपण आता काय करतोय कुठेतरी सोडून द्यायला लागलेलं आहे आणि अशी अशी वेळ येईल आता येईल किंवा पुढे कधीतरी येईल की आपण असं करत करत त्या त्या दिशेला जाऊ जिथे आपण सगळा आपले जे संहार आहे ते काय करू निरोधामध्ये जाऊ किंवा आपण सेसेशनमध्ये म्हणजे पूर्ण निपाणाच्या दुःखी आपल्याला लागेल पहिले बरोबर आहे की नाही कारण रस्ता तर हाच आहे आणि आपण आपले जे संहार आहे आपण इतके काढतो आहे तर तेच आपण तसंच काढत राहिलं हळूहळू तर त्या एक दिवस त्या त्या स्थितीमध्ये पोचणारच कारण रस्ता हाच आहे आणि ह्याच्याबद्दलच बुद्ध सांगत आहेत की जेव्हा तन्हाय अशेष विराग निरोधो चागो पती निसतो मृत्यू अनालयो अयखो आमसो विसाप सत्काय निरोधो मुक्तो भगवता ही किंवा जेव्हा ही तन्हा गुळापासनं अशेष अशेष निरोध म्हणजे अगदी काही शिल्लक न ठेवता काही शेष न ठेवता जेव्हा निरोध केली जाते संपवली जाते तिचा पूर्ण तिला लेटगो केलं जातं पूर्णपणे तिचा त्याग केला जातो जेव्हा आपण त्याच्यातनं निसटतो बाहेर येतो आपण बघतोय की आपण आता मी त्याच्यात मी नाही असं जेव्हा आपल्याला लक्षात येतं त्याला अनालय म्हणजे आपण त्यातनं बाहेर आलेलो आहे जसं म्हणजे आता आपण मी आहे फक्त आहे असं म्हणतो ना आपण ज्या क्षणाला अनंताचा काय होतं थोडासा अनुभव येतो की मी फक्त नाही मी नाही तेव्हा काय होतोय बुद्धांनी सांगितलेलं आहे की सत्काय निरोधो मुक्तो भगवता ती बुद्धांनी 
काय सांगितलंय हे सत्काय निरोध निरोध करता येतो आणि जो मार्ग आहे तो हाच मार्ग आहे सिक्स आर कोणच आपल्याला त्याच्यामध्ये जाता येतो आणि तुमच्यातले बरेचसे त्यामध्ये त्याच्या जवळपास पोचलेले आहेत वाईट माईंडमध्ये गेलेले आहे असे धोंडे सांगतायत त्यामुळे सगळे अगदी छान त्या मार्गाने सुसाट चाललेले आहे तसेच पुढे चालत राहा ओके ठीक आहे यदा वे पातु पवंती धम्म आता पिनो झायतो ब्राह्मणस अथ स खंखा वपयंती सब्बा यथो खायं पच्छयानं आवेदी वेन द नेचर ऑफ थिंग्स बिकम क्लिअर टू द डेडिकेटेडली मेडिटेटिंग ब्राह्मण At that time all doubts vanish when one understands the disappearance of all conditions. So when we know how this whole structure works, first it's arising, we understand, wow, okay, this is how it works, this is how it arises. Then there is a lot of doubt that disappears. We just like no, this is the dhamma, this is just the way it works. And then when we see that this is how to release it this is how to it works on the other way around where it 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 shuts down it calms down it it stops and all of this dukkha doesn't arise all of it nirodha and then great great uh faith arises because we just know faith and understanding come together in the buddha's teaching there's never it's not about blind faith here it's about understanding things properly this is just dhamma this is the way things work and then when you know this then faith arises because you just know it's like when you're uh, when you're doing something for a long time for example a, a skill or a craft for many hours many days and you just become really skilled at it you have a lot of faith that you know you know that you can do it you you don't you're not worried like oh can i like sculpt this thing or can i not do it you, you just know because you you're used to it you've done it many times you've seen it so and it's the same thing with the dhamma <clears throat> okay okay but uh bantani he vachun dakhalela ahe ki aplyala jeva हा जो रस्ता आहे विरोधाचा हा जेव्हा स्पष्ट होतो बरं की असाच हे हा जो रस्ता विरोध कसा करायचा आहे हा हा रस्ता जेव्हा स्पष्ट होतो आणि जो या रस्त्यावर चालत होतो बरोबर ना तो त्या रस्त्यावर अगदी म्हणजे मेडिटेशन करणारा जो व्यक्ती आहे तो अगदी मनपूर्वक अगदी आणि श्रद्धेने श्रद्धेने त्या रस्त्यावर चालत असतो डेडिकेटेड चालत असतो बरोबर ना आता पिनो अगदी प्रयत्नपूर्वक चालत असतो तेव्हा त्याचे सगळे त्याच्या सगळ्या शंका त्याच्या सगळे डाऊन त्याची सगळी इच्छी इच्छा नाहीशी होते कारण बुद्धांच्या धर्मामध्ये असं आहे की ही जी सध्या म्हणजे काय म्हणतात ना त्याला शंका निघून गेली की तिथे श्रद्धा उत्पन्न होते श्रद्धा उत्पन्न कधी होते तर श्रद्धा तेव्हाच उत्पन्न होते ही अगदी अंधश्रद्धा नाही आहे तर बुद्धांच्या धर्मामध्ये श्रद्धा ही कायम पहियासोबत उत्पन्न होते ओके जिथे तुम्हाला कळतं तुम्हाला अनुभवतं तुम्हाला समजतं तुम्हाला त्याचा अनुभव येतो स्वतःचा अनुभव जेव्हा येतो तेव्हा त्याच्याबरोबर श्रद्धा उत्पन्न होते ती पहियाबरोबरच होते ती अंधश्रद्धा असू शकत नाही ती तुम्ही जेव्हा ती एखादी गोष्ट जसं सांगितलं की एखादा स्वर्थ राहतो सुरुवातीला काम करत असतो करत असतो आणि नंतर इतका तो तज्ज्ञ होतो इतका विचार होतो की त्याला स्वतःमध्ये कुठे डाऊट राहत नाही की मी आता चुकीचं करीन वगैरे तर तसं आपल्याला आपण जे करत असतो त्याच्यामध्ये खूप कॉन्फिडन्स येतो खूप श्रद्धा उत्पन्न होते आणि ती आपल्या स्वतःच्या काय म्हणतात ना स्वतःबद्दलच्या आत्मविश्वासाने निर्माण झालेली असते बरोबर आहे ना ती कोणीतरी सांगितली म्हणून नसते तर आपण स्वतःच्या अनुभवाने ती निर्माण केलेली असते म्हणून अशी जेव्हा आपला श्रद्धा आणि पहिया आणि श्रद्धा निर्माण होते तर तेव्हा आपल्याला काय कळतं म्हणजे जेव्हा सगळे डाऊट निघून जातात तेव्हा आपल्याला हा सगळा धम्म सगळा धम्म कळतो हा कधी कळतो 
कारण आपण जेव्हा सगळे जे आपण ज्याने बनलेलो आहे जे जे कंडिशन आहेत बरोबर ना कॉज आणि कंडिशन आपण काय आहे प्रत्येक आपले जे विचार असतात ते तसे परिस्थिती निर्माण झाली की ते विचार येतात बरोबर ना तर त्या परिस्थिती आपण जर काढून टाकल्या तर आपले दुःख पण निघून जातं तसंच आहे ते तर त्याच्यामुळे जर आपल्याला हे समजलं ना की हे सगळं परिस्थितीनुसार त्या काळानुसार त्या वेळे तसं तसं उत्पन्न होत आहे तरच आपण त्यातनं सहज बाहेर येऊ शकतो ठीक आहे ओके and so here's a quiz question so what do we get when we purify dependent origination when we purify the upadana from the panchupadana kandas what do we get when we cut out the link after vedana tanha upadana bhava all this link when it's cut out what are we left with after that when when we practice this the right effort six hours we purify the mind prashna asa ahe ki jeva apan sagle kadhun takto baror na six hour ni apan vedana je tanha cha gusto sagle kadhun takle var kay rahto kay yeto we uh, i give you a hint we start to see things for what they are yatha bhuta nyada dasana shayata panya panya yes is getting close to what the the answer i want to hear <laughs> uh, there's four of them it's it's a it's a compound of four and it's found in the eightfold path under uh, one of the samma <laughs> samma sati very good ha huh? we start to see body as body we start to see vedana as vedana we start to see chitta as chitta we start to see dhamma as dhamma but we're not adding stuff to it we're not putting the tanha over it we're not putting the upadana over it we're not putting the bhava over it So it's a clean it's a clean perception of what's going on. So that's what these four satipatthanas that's what they are. So it's a purified dependent origination. When you do the work properly on dependent ori- origination on the five panchu parana khandas you get samma sati. And of course this is not a clean break. It happens over time as you practice. Of course, there's going to be little, little bits of tanha sometimes. Yeah, come to cloud your your beautiful wisdom, <laughs> because this is what this is what the four satipatthana is. Vinaya loke abhija do manasam, and this is also anicca sanya. When when you do this, anicca sanya is you know this it's constantly going, but you're not attaching, you're not latching on, not labeling, not judging. So very good. Good students practicing well. They're not sleeping yet. Not sleeping meditation yet. <laughs> okay. Now, I I hear it said the practice leading to the end of identity, the practice leading to the end of identity. But what is the practice leading to the end of identity? That is the eight spoke path of the awakened ones, brother Visaka. that is the practice leading to the end of identity that is wise understanding wise intention wise speech wise behavior wise livelihood wise practice wise awareness wise meditation of course you all know this in i'm not going to but uh it's good to know that okay now we've gone through all of this we've gone by the way now this is, this was the four noble truths using the panchu parana kandas and we had a complete breakdown of dependent origination through it so you have a pretty good understanding <laughs> of the whole process now and how this culminates in panya and samma sati and yesterday's talk was all about this part so now you know the whole way and you know that just by 6ring basically you're developing this okay next question <laughs> maybe doctor yeah. can go 
शेवटा जे निरोधक आमिनी सत्काय निरोधक आमिनी प्रतिपदा सत्काय निरोधक आमिनी प्रतिपदा थी ये पूछती कत्मानुभो ये सत्काय निरोधक आमिनी प्रतिपदा उत्तर भगवता थी मते साथ विचार कर विधा कशाला सत्काय निरोधक आमिनी प्रतिपदा मंडा है मग भम्मतिना चौथा जो प्रश्न है जो अपन काल अगर स्पष्टपण समझ चार प्रश्न होते ना ये दुख दुख समुदाय दुख निरोधक दुख निरोधक आटिपथाधी वे चार प्रश्न होते सत्काय सत्काय जस दुख का नर सत्काय समुदाय हा प्रश्न होता तीसरा होता सत्काय निरोध चौथा होता सत्काय निरोधक आमिनी प्रतिपदा अपन चार आर्य सत्या सारख बतीच समूह पार्थ पगित है अर्य अठी तो मुद्दो सुधा बगित है सग एक कस एक कस पूरक है कि एकमेक बदल एकमेक कस एकमेक निगड़ित है अपन चार आर्य सत्य वेग पटीच समूह पार्थ वेग संबंधित करता सग कर सोक सगे भूतान से दम जो है चार आगे सत्य पतिच समूह सूर्यो वो भस्तरी वेन द नेचर ऑफ थिंग्स बिकम क्लियर टू द डिवोटेड मेडिटेटिंग ब्राह्मण One stands shattering death and its troops like the sun lighting up the sky. This is just a inspirational quote. <laughs> I just think it's really beautiful and it's true when you start to see reality like it is, you don't put a self over it, you don't personalize it, you don't create more problems for yourself. There is this beautiful light around you that just arises and everything becomes light it's it's it doesn't have this heavy self that take everything personal all the time that you're carrying around on your shoulders all the time it's just like whatever you know <laughs> i see things the way that they are i <laughs> it's hard to use words sometimes <clears throat> we see the things the way that they are and this is great liberation in itself it brings so much happiness so much lightness in our lives you know you don't have to take everything personal when people get angry at you and take it you know dump their loads on you you can just be like yeah that's their problem it's not mine you know it's that's okay we're not like uh we're not we don't need to accumulate things anymore we understand that you know like i yeah i love melon juice but I'm going from here in five days, and I'm not going to have melon juice again for a while, and that's just the reality. <laughs> But that's okay. I'm enjoying it now, and then it's it's going to be something else, and that's fine. I don't have to cling to it and then cause myself problems. Why would I do that? And then you have like everything in your life becomes so much happier, so much lighter, and this is beautiful wisdom and happiness from the Buddha himself, and that's why we understand these. Sometimes it seems a little complicated, huh? but <laughs> when we start to hear it more and more, it makes a lot of sense, and then we really start to see how it works in our mind, how it happens, and this is very liberating, like the sun lighting up the sky. 
So, is this longing part of the five fabrics of the ego? Are the five fabrics of the ego different from that longing, that craving, that tanha? So, are they all together like a mush or are they just like found uh, one, one on one? This longing is neither a part from the five fabrics of the ego nor are the five fabrics of the ego different from that longing. The craving and desire for any of these fabrics of the ego, brother Visaka, that is the longing therein. So this is, see when I tell you not to make concrete out of linear structures in the Buddha's teaching, it's not because tanha comes after vedana that it doesn't taint the whole chain. It, that, that doesn't mean that it's not found in everything, even though it comes like pasa, vedana, then tanha, upadana, bhava. It's not necessarily linear. It actually feeds everything. It influences everything. And that's what it says here, basically. Is it, is it part of it or is it uh, apart from it? it it's actually, it's mingled together. It's nothing, it's, it's, this, it's, um, it's part of it. Okay. Aye, what is the belief in personal identity? Sakaya ditti. Is that? Okay, good. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Brother Visaka, someone who is not learned in the Dhamma of the awakened people, who does not visit the awakened people, who does not know nor practice the Dhamma of the awakened people, someone who does not visit the people of truth, the Sapurisa, who does not know the, and practice the Dhamma of the people of truth, conceives self in, con conceives self to be material or self as being part of matter or matter as within self or a self within matter. 
See, all these little ways that we can find the self in these things. One conceives self, self to be experiences, Vedana, or self as being part of experiences, or experiences as within self, or self as within experiences. And you can just take that as a little guided meditation here, like think, feel it in your mind, see what, see what it does to your mind. One conceives self to be perception or self as being part of perception or perception as within self or self as within perception. One conceives self to be mental activities or self as being part of mental activities or mental activities as within self or self as within mental activities. One conceives self to be consciousness or self as being part of consciousness or consciousness as within self or self as within consciousness. This is how there is the belief in personal identity, bro Brother Visaka. And how I, is there no belief in personal identity? Well, Brother Visaka, someone who is learned, who is learned in the Dhamma of the awakened people, I'm not going to read this all over again, does not conceive self to be material or self as being part of matter or matter as within self or self as within matter does not conceive self to be experiences or self as being part of experiences or experiences as within self or self as within experiences one does not conceive self to be perception or self as being part of perception or perception as being part of self or self as within perception does not conceive self to be mental activities or self as being part of mental activities or act mental activities as within self or self as within mental activities one does not conceive self to be consciousness or self as being part of consciousness or consciousness as within self or self as within consciousness. This is how there is no belief in personal identity. I have a friend in the Netherlands, his name is Kuhn, and uh, he likes to say, hey, no self, no problem. It just makes me think of him. <laughs>
रूपा अंततो समूह पुस्तकी त्याला रूपाला मीच आहे असं बघतात असं समजतात रूपामध्येच मी आहे रूपवंत हे रूप माझं आहे मीच रूपात आहे असं समजतात अत्ता अत्तनी वा रूप रूप आणि मी आणि रूप एकच आहे आणि रूपस्वी वा अत्तन या रूपाशिवाय मी आहे बरोबर ना रूपाशिवाय मी आहे म्हणजे मी आहेच रूप नसलं तरी मी आहेच असं जेव्हा समजतात ते काय आहे त्याला सत्ताय दिखी म्हणायचं मग हे सगळ्या बाबतीत हे बाळालं रूपाच्या बाबतीत मग मनाच्या बाबतीत बरोबर ना हे सेम असं मनाच्या बाबतीत आहे जसे वेदनेच्या बाबतीत आहे संयाच्या बाबतीत आहे संहाराच्या बाबतीत आहे ते काय समजणार विज्ञानाच्या बाबतीत आहे विज्ञानच अर्थतो समरूप असत विज्ञानच मी आहे कॉन्शियसनेस मी आहे माझ्यातच कॉन्शियसनेस आहे बरोबर आहे ना कॉन्शियसनेस मी आहे किंवा विज्ञान मी आहे माझ्यातच विज्ञान आहे अर्थनी वा विज्ञान मी आणि विज्ञान एकच आहे आणि विज्ञान स्मी वा अर्थन त्याच्याशिवाय मी आहे विज्ञानाशिवाय मी आहे असे जे समजतात ते सगळे काय आहे सत्काय अर्थात अकोविदच आहे कारण म्हणजे आपणच आहोत ते कारण आपण मी मीच करत असतो ना मीच आहे कारण आपण अजून अर्य कुगल झालेलो नाही त्याच्यामुळे आपण आता त्या मार्गावर जायचं असेल तर आपल्याला पहिले तर उपचार व्हावं लागेल आणि ही हे शरीर मी नाही बरोबर ना माझ्या मनातले विचार मी नाही संया मी नाही वेदना मी नाही संसार मी नाही विज्ञान मी नाही रूप मी नाही रूपात मी नाही असे जे आपण जेव्हा विचार करू बरोबर ना रूप वेगळं आहे किंवा रूपात मी नाही असं जेव्हा आपण विचार करू किंवा हे सगळं काय आहे अनिच्छ आहे मी अनक्त आहे हे अत्तामध्ये कुठेही अडकत नाही जे अडकतात ते काय आहे त्यालाच काय म्हणायचं सकाय Aye, what is the eight spoke path of the awakened ones? Now we're shifting gears a little bit. The <clears throat> This is the eight spoke path of the awakened one, brother Visaka, wise understanding, wise intention, speech, but behavior, livelihood, practice, awareness and wise meditation or wise samadhi. Aye, is the eight spoke path fabricated or unfabricated is it conditioned or unconditioned it is fabricated brother visaka it is conditioned it is we are developing the mind we are conditioning the mind we are practicing bhavana we're cultivating these states until we reach the unconditioned i e what is meditation because he ended with why samadhi ah huh? samma samadhi now i e What is Samma Samadhi? What is this Samadhi meditation? What is the object of meditation? What are the requirements for meditation? And what is the development of meditation? And here the Pali is uh, Samadhi Nimitta. Patme Dhamma Samadhi Nimitta, Patme Dhamma Samadhi Parikkara, Patma Samadhi Bhavanati. Yes, there we go. all of these very interesting questions <laughs> calm unity of mind brother visaka that is samadhi the four natural resting places of awareness sati the four sati patanas these are the object of meditation the samadhi nimitta the four wise undertakings the four right efforts basically these are the requirements for the meditation for samadhi the practice development and cultivation of these things this is the development of samadhi and now this is really interesting i always really enjoyed these four lines these four answers because they've answered so many things in my own practice okay so what's the role of the satipatthanas the the role of the satipatthanas is where the mind rests after it lets go of uh craving after it lets go of distractions and it comes back when we use the six r's the six r's 
basically we're slowly developing the Satipatthanas even though we're using the Metta, the Brahma Viharas these things are only to strengthen the way that to see properly things as they are because they're selfless, they're really open, wonderful, uplifted states of mind and we start to see things for what they are without clinging and so this is really important so when, when we practice right effort and right effort is the parikkara right effort is the requirement this is what we need to do in order to, um, to practice properly and then our attention, our awareness rests upon the four satipatthanas uh, this is, and that becomes the nimitta that becomes what we're aware of the sign, what we're seeing we're seeing the body as a body, we're seeing Vedanas as Vedanas, sensations as they are, Chitta as it is, Dhamma as it is. It's not the hindrances are coming, it's not you, it's not your story, it's just hindrances. <laughs> it's just distractions. Dhamma nupasi viharati. Huh? We see just Dhamma as Dhamma, the hindrances as hindrances, not you, not, it's just conditioned mental habits and then uh, well of course the calm unity of mind that comes from that that comes from right practice that rests in the four satipatthanas this is samadhi this is samma samadhi okay uh, बनवतो का कंडीशन बन न प्रश्न हा विचार है तत्मोपन समाधि तत्मे धम्मा समाधि निमित्ता तत्मे धम्मा समाधि परिकारा तत्मा समाधि भावना थी प्रश्न समाधि समाधि से निमित्त का कस कल समाधि है समाधि आई है कस कल समाधि से समाधि से भावना उत्तर एकाग्र चार शक्ति पठ्ठाणित हो चार शक्ति पठ्ठाण शरीर 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 बो वेदने वेदना बो चित्ता मन बो 
ब्रह्माला धम्म म्हणून बघायला लागतो म्हणजे हे माझे धम्म आहे हे माझं शरीर आहे हे माझे विचार आहेत माझं माइंड आहे असं न बघता फक्त हे चित्त आहे हे धम्म आहे हे काय आहे असं बघायला तर ते आपल्याला जेव्हा असं बघता येतं मी नाही माझं नाही असं जेव्हा बघतो तेव्हा आपल्याला कळायला पाहिजे की समाधी काय आहे की निमित्त जे पूर्ण आपल्याला त्याचे साईन्स मिळालेले आहे की समाधी पूर्ण झालेली आहे आणि मग समाधी पूर्ण होण्यासाठी आपल्याकडे काय हवं असतं शक्तीपाठांमध्ये मन जायला आपल्याला काय एफर्ट्स करायला लागतात किंवा काय आपल्याकडे रिक्विसिट्स आहेत किंवा परीक्षा काय पाहिजे तर आपल्याकडे संभा वाया हो ज्याला त्यालाच आपण संभ चक्तार संभपधाना संभपधान म्हणजे संभा वाया जे आपण जे व्यायाम करतो शिक्षार करतो त्याच्यानेच आपल्याला संधीपठानामध्ये जाता येतो तर हे काय झाले हे त्याचे रिक्वायरमेंट आहे रिक्वायरमेंट म्हणजे काय हे कसं आहे असल्याशिवाय माईंड आपलं किंवा मन आपलं संधी पठानामध्ये जाणार ओके आय हाऊ मेनी काइंड ऑफ ॲक्टिव्हिटीज आर संकारज आर देअर देर आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ ॲक्टिव्हिटीज ब्रदर विसाक ॲक्टिव्हिटीज ऑफ बॉडीज ॲक्टिव्हिटीज ऑफ स्पीच अँड ॲक्टिव्हिटीज ऑफ माइंड आय ए वर आर दिव्हिटीज ऑफ द बॉडी द स्पीच अँड द माइंड ब्रीदिंग इन अँड ब्रीदिंग आउट दीज आर दिव्हिटीज ऑफ बॉडी It is the activities of body. It's not the only one, <laughs> but it's the one that they're naming here. Thinking and reflecting. These are the activities of speech. Perception and experience. These are the activities of the mind. And here we talk about Niroda. I, how is the release from perceptual awareness experienced? When one enters upon the release from perceptual awareness, Nirodha Samapati, one does not think, I will enter the release from perceptual awareness. <laughs> I will enter Nirodha. I am entering Nirodha. I am in Nirodha. So one does not think, I'm entering Nirodha. I'm, I'm in Niroda. There's, not, there's nothing like this. No, nobody enters Niroda. <laughs> That's what it means, Niroda. <laughs> It's like, there's no more. I, when one is entering the release from perceptual awareness, which thing sees first? The activities of body, speech, or mind? When one is entering the release from perceptual awareness, the activities of speech fade away first. then the activities of body, then the activities of mind. So here we have vitaka vichara, first jhana, letting go. Then fourth jhana, we have breathing in and out. It's not that the breathing in and out stops. We actually have scientific proof for that. It, it doesn't stop. But since the perception of the body stops, then it's kind of, it, it stops. But people keep breathing, yes. It is believed in a lot of Theravada Buddhist schools that breathing in and out stops uh, at the fourth jhana, like completely. But that's, yeah, that's not really true. It, it, it can happen for a certain kind of meditation, but uh, it's not, not the case. Brother Visaka, uh, in fact, we have uh, scientific evidence that even in Niroda, there is slight breathing. There is still a kind of a... an interflow and the heart is beating as well i how does one emerge how does one come out from the release of perceptual awareness coming out of the release coming out of niroda one does not think i will emerge from niroda i am emerging from niroda or i have emerged from niroda Rather, it is because one has previously cultivated one's mind in the appropriate way that it leads to that state. Aye, while emerging from the release of perceptual awareness, what things manifest first? Brother Visaka, when emerging, first the mental activities, the perception and feeling, then the bodily activities, 
the awareness of the body again and the verbal activities we talk about each other. I when one is emerged from when one has emerged from Niroda, how many kinds of contacts impinges upon that person? Brother Visaka, when one emer has emerged from Niroda, three kinds of contacts impinge on their minds. The contact with emptiness, the contact with signlessness, and the contact with undirectedness. Emptiness, there was nobody there. There was complete release. There was no sense of I, there was no sense of anything. There was emptiness completely. Signlessness, there was no meditation object. All objects have been sixard and they have been released and relaxed. There is no more object, there is nothing. Consciousness has lost any objects, even awareness itself. And then undirectedness, there is no more direction, there is no more inclination of the mind. It has completely opened up, completely. Okay. Uh, 
डाकीने डायरेक्ट डोळ्या उघडा बोलायला लागा पुस्तक म्हणा असं वाटतं का तर पहिले मी तुम्हाला काय सांगतात पहिले तुम्हाला मनाने तुम्हाला यायला सांगतो बरोबर आहे सांगतात की नाही की आता मन तयार करा की तुम्हाला आता जागं व्हायचंय बरोबर आहे म्हणजे तुम्हाला काय करतात मनोसंधारमध्ये दुसरं तुम्हाला आता म्हणतात की आता तुम्ही काय करा डोळे उघडा म्हणजे काय संहार बरोबर आहे की नाही काय संहारामध्ये या बरोबर आहे आणि नंतर तुम्हाला पूजा आता सुरू करा असं म्हणून तुम्हाला बोलायला सांगतात कळतंय का तेव्हा तर नाही कळत डायरेक्ट पहिले डोळे असं बस तर तसं न करता त्या स्टेजनी तसंच यायचं कळलं का सांगतात ते तर ते आपण तसंच त्याच्यातनं बाहेर आलं पाहिजे बरोबर आहे की नाही तसंच बाहेर येतात जर तुम्ही त्या निरोधामध्ये गेला असेल तर तसंच येणार बाहेर बरोबर आहे की नाही गेलेलाच नसाल तर तशी पण बाहेर तर हे समजून घ्यायचं असतं हे असंच का आहे ओके Now this is uh, one of my favorite parts of the sukta. I once emerged from the release from perceptual awareness from nirodha samapatti. What does the mind lean slope and inclines towards? Once emerged out of nirodha, one's mind leans towards release, slopes towards release and inclines towards release. And I think this is viveka. Uh, viveka bono vinik viveka ah yes viveka ninnang viveka ninnang chittam hoti viveka bono viveka pokkaram yes so this is when i was saying you are by practicing the six hours to that depth you are rewiring your mind to the deepest level you're uh, recoding your operating system to the deepest level and implementing the new uh, software which is release autopilot <laughs> and then this will stay with you for a long time this will be the new mode of operating of the mind will be to release to release to detach to not to not want to get involved anymore with being um Uh, taking action on the uh, uh, desires and opinions and judgments and all of this calms down and you just want release just more release i just want to just ah. <laughs> this is where i feel the most comfortable so this is what happens Okay, so I'm skipping a big section here. Yes. Doctor, we're going down to almost close to the end. There's a section where uh, 
Brother Visaka asks, should the inclination to crave be abandoned in regards to all pleasant Vedanas? Because this is getting a little thick. We'll just... We need to move. Huh? Yes, uh, and then should the inclination to be repelled by, be abandoned in regards to all unpleasant experiences, should the inclination to lacking awareness be abandoned in regards to all mental experiences? Yes. No, Brother Visaka. Not in regards to all of them. Huh, isn't that interesting? So usually, yeah, I, I don't know if you've practiced in the same uh, traditions that I have, but you're told not to be attached to the pleasant sensation, to the joy, to the, the, the fun bits that you can get out of all of this. But actually now, the Arahant, Bhikkhuni, Dhammadina, Dhamma, Dhammadina is saying, no, you don't have to let go of all desires for sensu uh, like uh, pleasant experiences and what is that for example by letting go of sensory engagement that sounds familiar letting go of unwholesome states of mind with wholesome thinking and reflection one experiences the joyful happiness born of letting go and understands and one understands and lives in the first level of meditation then one lets go of craving no inclinations to crave are found there so this is quite encouraging it's quite nice that we hear that well if you just can make it to the first jhana the buddha says you know that's kind of there's no more craving there there's no more unwholesome states and you're you're safe there and that's not it's not too hard to get to. It's like we said earlier, if you were to practice metta for the time of a finger snap and experience the metta for just that time, you're practicing jhana, you're there. So it's really good. And you can enjoy this. Now there's an arahant, none who says this. So, huh? Majakara. <laughs> good. Okay, now then one might think, Oh, when will I experience and live in the same plane as the awakened ones now live? So when, when will I be awakened? When, I be a, when will I be an Arya Puggala? From this longing for the highest liberation, because yes, it does happen, and this is the biggest hindrance after a while when people want to get niroda or what i want to nibbana i want to nibbana and then that's the only thing that's keeping you from getting nibbana <laughs> <laughs> i want nibbana i want nibbana i want nibbana but you just have to drop it and then it happens <laughs> so from this grief arises oh i have to adjust my eyes okay grief arises and because of that grief distress becomes manifest then one lets go of repulsion and the inclination to be repulsed is no longer found later on one might meditate unattached to pleasant experiences unstirred by pleasant ones as mental exciting excitement and heaviness settles one's mind becomes balanced purified by unmoving presence understanding and living in the fourth level of meditation then one lets go of unawareness and no inclination to lacking awareness is found there so see here these are all the wholesome ways that we can actually see this how we can still have pleasant and uh, we can uh, with the fourth jhana for example we can we can actually have a equanimous mind that is not indifferent or not just not caring but actually really just equanimous neutral uh, 
दुखाय वेदनाय पतिघात सह महातमो सपाय अदुखं सुखाय वेदनाय अविज्ञान सह महातमो कि आप सग सोड़ दया का सुखा जी वेदना अपने संवेदना जी जाए कि सोड़ दी है का दुखा जी सोड़ दी है का असुख दुख सोड़ दी है का अर्हत ब्रह्मदीना संगता है कि सगड़ा ज्या न खो आवड़ो सपाय सुखाय वेदना राय पहा लगो कि सगड़ा ज्या सग सोड़ा नहीं ज्या आनंद देता सगड़ा अपने वेदना सोड़ दया नहीं आज मनता है कि अनंत संगता है कि तुम्हें सगड़ा आनंदा कि आनंद देना सगड़ा संवेदना सोड़ नहीं दया कारण अपने प्रथम छाना मध्य सुख आती अनुभव घायो तो घाय तो सोड़ा नहीं बना पड़ता है न सब्बाय न को आऊसो विशाख सप्पाय सुखाय वेदनाय रागानुसय पहा करतो इधा आऊसो विशाख विपु विविच्चे व कामे विविच्च अकुसले निधने स वितप्त स विचार विवेक जपीति सुखं पठम जान उपसंपज विवते आपण जेव्हा पर्याय नामामध्ये जातो म्हणजे सगळे अकुशल सोडतो नेटवो करतो आणि आपण काय करतो पुन्हा शिक्षा करून आपण नेटावर घेतो बरोबर ना तर तेव्हा आपण पहिल्या जाणामध्ये ज्या किती सुखाचा अनुभव करतो तो आपण काय करायचं सोडायचा नाही सोडायचा नाही म्हणजे तो आनंद अनुभवायचा आहे पण पण गेलेला आहे रागम तेन बजावती न तत्व राग अनुसयो अनुसेती जी आसक्ती है तैबल अड़काय आसक्ति मात्र सोड़ दी है रागा अनुसय अनुसूति रागा अनुसय जो जोपले अनुसय राग है कि आसक्ति है अड़काये आनंद तो घाय पाजे सा कायम पाजे चार दिवस पाजे कायम पाजे प्रथम जाना मे गए उदासमी यामध्येच मी कायम का नाही राहायचं पहिल्या झाणकच का नाही राहायचं मी सारखं बरोबर ना असं त्याला वाटतं आणि मग तो काय होतो तिथेच अडकून पडतो मग आपण पुढे जात आहे आणि मग मग काय होत तो मन अस पटीत भरते ना म्हणजे त्याच्यामध्ये काय जन्माला येत की अरे हे तर चाललंय हे मला नाही जाऊ द्यायचं आहे पहिल्या झाणक तर बाहेर आणि घ्यायला लागलं की मग दुःख व्हायला लागलं मग ते जे घ्यायला लागतं ना दुःख ते आपल्याला काढून टाकायचं आहे पण आपल्याला कुठलं दुःख काढायचं आहे जेव्हा झान येतं तेव्हा त्याच्यात तो आनंद असतो बरोबर ना तो सुद्धा गेला की तर दुःख आलं तर त्या दुःखाला सुद्धा काय करायचं आहे काढून टाकायचं आहे आणि त्या दुःखामध्ये अजिबात झोपायचं आणि किंवा अजिबात काय म्हणतात ना अनुशय जे झोपलेले आहे त्यांना पण उठवायचं नाही त्याला लगेच पहा तर ना जर असं केलं जर तुम्ही दुःखाला पण सोडून दिलं आणि सुखाला पण सोडून दिलं तरच तुम्ही भिक्कू सुखसच पाहाना दुःखसच पाहाना कुबेव सोमनस दोमनस अथंग अदुखम असुखम उपेक्षा सती पारी सुखी चतुर्थ झान उपसंपज विवरती तर तुम्ही चौथ्या जाणार जाऊ शकाल नाही तर पहिल्या जाणातच मारामाऱ्या होतील बरोबर आहे ना तिकडनं पुढे जाता येणार नाही तर ते छान गेलं तर त्याचं जे दुःख येतं त्याला पण लगेच लेखो करून टाकायचं पुन्हा त्याच्यात घ्यायचं आणि कुठे दुःख असू दे सुख असू दे सगळ्यांना लेखो करत लेखो करत आपण आलो तर मग तुम्ही 
चौथ्या जाणामध्ये जाऊ शकता अदरवाईज पहिल्या जाणामध्ये ओके दिस इज द लास्ट स्ट्रेच ऑफ द दिस कोर्स इट्स ऑलमोस्ट ओव्हर सो ओके लेट गो एनी टेन्शन इन युअर बॉडी इन युअर माइंड ओके आणि चसन्या लेट गो रिलॅक्स स्माईल स्मित हास्य हा गुड गुड व्हेरी गुड तोरा तोरा एन फिनिश व्हेरी क्विक हा ओके हिअर वी गो I what is the opposite of pleasant experiences Their opposite is unpleasant experiences brother Visaka I what is the opposite of unpleasant experiences Their opposite is pleasant experiences Visa brother Visaka I what is the counterpart of mental experiences The opposite is lack of discernment brother visaka i what is the opposite of lacking discernment its opposite is discernment brother visaka i what is the opposite of discernment the opposite its opposite is liberation or its counterpart i what is the opposite of liberation the opposite of liberation is nibbana the counterpart is nibbana brother visaka i what is the counterpart of nibbana you have brought this line of reasoning too far brother visaka you were not able to see the limit to your questions this holy life is established upon nibbana it culminates in nibbana and it ends in nibbana Bear this in mind brother Visaka go to the awakened one and ask him about the same questions and if and as he will answer to you you should remember it then the lay supporter Visaka was delighted and rejoiced in the bikuni damadinna's words paid homage to her and went to the awakened one then the awakened one said The Nanda Madina is a learned woman, Visaka. Her wisdom is vast. If you had come to me with the same questions, I would have answered in the same way as her. That is the meaning, and so you should bear it in mind. This is what the awakened one said, glad at heart. The follower Visaka rejoiced in the awakened one's words. ते 
I thought it was a good, uh, a, a good sutta for the kokan, kokan because uh, you were saying that kokan, kokan, ah, many bikunis, bikunis, yes, vast wisdom, vast, big wisdom, mahapanya, mahabaka, panya, bikuniya. So, I just really like the end scene there where this the arahant nun is like teaching her like. Uh, late, uh, not late, but uh, yeah, the, her ex-husband and uh, who's a nanagami and <laughs> just saying like, you were not able to see the limits to your questions. <laughs> okay, so from the arising of identity when your your mind gets batakla and then you take it personal and now you know how to break it apart not take it so personal have fun majakara no problem six hour and then just enjoy it's the last day tomorrow make the best out of it have fun and uh, i will see you tomorrow morning okay let's share our merits very good uh -huh. ที่ผมรับเนี่ยมีแต่ละสาธิตก็ที่เจ้าผมรับตัวธรรมเดชอะไรเอาไปเอ่อเต็มมากผมรับเนี่ยจัสตบายก็เอาไปเจ้าเอ
ดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิดุขปัตตาชานิ